Hey guys, Ambush Bunny here. I was a little late on getting to do this video, I had to run some errands, but like I posted in the description of my previous video, if you need a few days before you actually get to slice your meat, you've got about three to four days to take a sip in the refrigerator. So I'm going to show you how to square up these edges. So I've got a nice piece right here. And you want to kind of look at the edges, and it all depends on each piece of meat and how it's been cut previously, because you want it to be able to sit where you have a nice squared edge on this side and this side so that when it goes across the blade it's a smooth squared edge and it doesn't drag as bad and it cuts easier this one here is a chef's choice you can get your meat slicers at places like at academy and so it looks like the best way is going to be this side and this side and these little edges that we end up cutting off we chop up in the smaller pieces and it goes in for sorry for omelets and breakfast tacos we'll slice that up into smaller pieces but that looks really nice as you can see when you get Boston butts you're going to get more lean meat and less fat so it's a lot better for you it does get somewhat crispy but you're not going to get as crispy as store-bought bacon so this is more of like a country ham bacon. Save for this piece. So now what I have is a nice square off edge here and here. And it's going to go, here's my nice slicer. I have a dial on the back of it where I can set my thickness. And it sits nice and flush there. That might be a little too thin, so let me back it up just a smidge. That's better. And the meat, once it's cut, comes out on this side. And this is why I have it set up this way. I've got my cutting board here to cut my squared off edges. I've got my pan over here with the meat. I've got, this is what catches when you slice it. There's a little overhang here, so to keep it from tipping over, I've got a little hand towel underneath it. This pan is for your larger slice pieces. This one is for when you get closer to the end of some of these meats. It's going to be really small and kind of ghibli. Get down, Ash. And that's to put the small pieces in. All right, now that I've got the cat moved and I've reclaimed my chair, we're back here on the back side where we're going to be slicing. Let's get this started. Now remember, this is a meat saw. Fingers and skin is also considered meat. So watch where you put your fingers so you don't cut yourself. As it says here, caution, keep hands away from blade. Looks like there's a little dial here one that I can turn to change my thickness of the meat. So I can get the, the preferred thickness thinner, be a little crispier, thicker, great for sandwiches. <laughs> Here, more slice of finger off, pull it from the base.
depending on what price you catch your bacon on, you can actually do this and make your bacon. It come out to be less than $1.50 a pound after you take in consideration the salting and all the other parts that goes in with it. These are the pieces I'm talking about, the little ones. Let's save those for later. Don't toss them. You can fry those up and put them in your omelets, hash browns, make breakfast tacos. Uh, I'm going to work on doing all these and I'll get back to y'all for another video to do on how to do packaging, which can also be used for other things, not just for bacon and meats, but you can also do, if you're having a garden, you can do filled peas and sliced squash nut items. So that way it stays better in the fridge or in the freezer, sorry, without any other problems. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up here on and drop any questions are in the bottom and be sure to like and subscribe. See you guys later.